This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. Psychologist Dr. John Delatore is joining us right now to answer the question that may be on everyone's mind, at least those of us who've been following the trial of Lori Vallow Daybell uh, and the upcoming one of Chad and the new charges that have been brought against Lori Vallow for the attempted murder of Brandon Boudreaux and the murder of her husband, Charles Vallow. It's a lot. There's a lot to come in this case. What on earth do you think is going through the minds of these two right now, John? Uh, for Chad, I think it's a little bit easier because I think Chad is probably the one that's more present to his surroundings than Lori is. So I think right now, Chad is probably, you know, shaking in his boots. I yeah. think right now, Chad is is sitting down with his attorneys to figure out how he's going to get himself out of this, in particular, getting out of the death penalty. Mm-hmm. Um, when it comes to Lori, I, you know, I don't know. I, I, I think it's, I think she's still trying to adjust to uh, prison life, right? I don't think she's in the unit that she's going to be for the duration of her sentence. Sure. So she's probably in some kind of holding area, some kind of initiation area. So she's still trying to get the lay of the land. I think right now she's probably just so focused on uh, getting through day by day and, and, and thinking about, um, where she finds herself currently to really be worried about what could be happening on the horizon. I mean, at this point for her, technically it it doesn't even matter. She's going to be in jail for the rest of her life uh, unless some sort of appeal comes up and, and grants her something. But as of now it's, it's jail forever, no matter what, no matter what other trials she faces, what other charges she faces uh, and, and how damning that may be. How do you foresee someone like Lori, doing in prison or surviving in prison to use those terms i think she's going to survive the same way she survived in the world um now there's going to be less emphasis on her overall attractiveness but i think she's going to survive by moving from one person to the next to provide her protection Mm -hmm. but also uh being some sort of prison minister i I think that there are some individuals who uh, may find her appealing and and so if she can if she can position herself where she is uh, a preacher of some kind i think that might give her some uh some avenues for which to 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 make the time uh go easier for her and that'd be interesting in that sort of an aspect. Uh, do you foresee that if she were to go down that road, being kind of the crazy ministries that she was a part of with Chad and the uh, the saying that they believe these things are speaking to God and they were friends with Jesus, or is someone like Lori, does she have the capability to walk it back to more of a balanced, I guess, you know, sane look at uh, that religion or ministry? No, I don't think she can walk it back. I, I think that it may start as sort of the, it may start as similar to LDS teachings, mm-hmm. but the the more the more she gets into it, I think the more it's gonna it's gonna sound like the the nonsense that she was saying uh, towards the end. Yeah, I, I would imagine that would probably be the road that that would go down. Let's talk about the individuals that were affected by this. Many testified, some you'd even question to say how involved were they uh, on in some of the processes that went on or the crimes that were committed uh, by Chad and Lori. Talking more generally about people in general, uh, if someone has a loved one, that, you know, Lori seemed to be pretty normal for a lot of her life to a certain extent. Uh, didn't profess to see zombies or believe her children were being possessed or this or that. Just kind of went along with life to a, a certain way. Uh, then suddenly everything changed. And and her friends were saying, yeah, this is, this is a little bit different. Uh, some went along with it. Some cut ties. What does a family member do or a friend do of someone that's close to them? In a situation like that, where they're almost being indoctrinated into something, whether it be a cult, whether it be a small religion, whether it be a this or a that, how does one break through to someone 
that almost a flip is a switch has been flipped and they've, they've kind of changed their way of thinking. And it's uh, the difficulty of, of swinging them back uh, before things get too deep. I think it's, I think it's super complicated because I think multiple things are at play because here we have someone on the outside who has a loved one who is saying these kinds of weird things, these weird outlandish things, and you want to support them, right? Because they're a loved one. You, you, you want to trust them and you want to give them the benefit of the doubt. They haven't maybe done anything like anything violent or anything like that. They're just saying some weird stuff. Yeah. And you want to give them the space to, to be able to have these kinds of thoughts, but that's, you're walking a fine line because it is possible that the the closer you stay to that individual, the more you are to be ensnared by some of these thoughts. It, I think people have this idea that, well, only crazy people can fall victim to, uh, you know, the, these kinds of, of weird delusional thinking. The reality is, is that anybody can find themselves falling victim to uh, polarizing and delusional thinking at any point in time. So if you're the loved one, you have to be very careful because the closer you are, the more likely you are to be ensnared. It's, it's almost like falling into a black hole. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is a point in which you can observe a black hole and it not impact you. But once you cross that event horizon, you're going to fall, you're, you're, you're going to fall into it. And maybe it's not falling into the thoughts, but it could certainly be falling into certain behaviors that you wouldn't have done had you not been ensnared by it. So you have to be very careful. And is it possible to break someone? Yes, it is possible to break someone of their delusions, but that's not for a loved one to do. That's for a mental health professional to do. Mm -hmm. Would the goal at that point be to try and encourage someone to get to a mental health professional and, and handle things that way rather than attempt to, you know, walk the fine line of sanity and the black hole, because, uh, you know, a friend, a family member, they're, they're not going to be qualified to help guide an individual out of that unless they have uh, the, the resources to do so or the, the knowledge to do so. I, is it, uh, and then how do you do it? Cause that's the biggest thing, trying to get someone to seek help when they need help. Obviously, that is one of the biggest barriers to mental health uh, help that we face. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where your instinct as the loved one is to be, is to be uh, confrontive, right. To automatically confront the individual and say, this is the evidence as to why you're wrong. And all that that's going to do is further inoculate the individual from the information that is different than the beliefs that they have. So you don't want to be confrontational. But loved ones have a tendency to do that. So you have to be able to move and 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 and, and roll with where the individual is and, and meet the individual where they're at. Maybe not presenting the mental health professional immediately as the person that's going to fix you. Because not everybody needs to be fixed. What they need is the realization that the behaviors that they're engaging in because of these beliefs are maladaptive and problematic and they're going to get you in trouble. Mm -hmm. And so you're free to believe whatever you want to believe, but you're not free to commit a crime. And that's where the psychologist can kind of meet the person where they're at, enter into the delusion, see how the delusion is being protective. Why does the individual have this thing? It's not just, it doesn't come out of nowhere. It comes from a place and it comes from a place that's wholly unique to the individual so that we explore what is going on there. How is it helping you believing these kinds of things? And then finding other ways in which, more healthy ways in which you can be protected the way that you need to be protected. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. Dr. John Delatore, thank you so much for your insight into uh, that conversation. Always very much appreciated. If you like the podcast, you want access to all of our podcasts, and we got a lot of them then become a premium subscriber. Yes, to the True Crime Today family. All you got to do is uh, go to our page on Apple Podcasts and go to the premium option. Subscribe, get access to this show ad-free. Get access to all the others as well in the family. You can check it out right there. And uh, binge away ad-free. We do greatly appreciate it. Even try it out for three days free. My name's Tony Bruschi. Stay with us.